JSX for Vanilla JS, right now on Blue Collar Coder. I've been playing around with Vanilla JS a lot lately. Certainly a lot more since I've been working with web components. And while Vanilla JS is like refreshingly straightforward after years of like these heavyweight frameworks like React and all that, there's still some pain points. One in particular is creating DOM elements. And I was thinking about that when it dawned on me that JSX is actually not directly coupled to React. Meaning that if you work in like something like Preact, you're actually going to be using H to build those, those elements so you can kind of point JSX at the H function as opposed to react.create element. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here for a second, so let's have head over to the Babel REPL and I'll show you what I mean. So let's say you do something simple like this. Now you can see over on the other side, the actual JavaScript it creates is just some calls to react create element. And maybe you're like, oh, okay, yeah, so what? But now let's go add this little pragma at the top. And now it's going to call DOM instead of react.create element. So we can point it wherever we want. Of course, you probably don't want to put that pragma everywhere. So there's actually a way that you can just drop that into Babel RC and that get supplied globally. Pretty much how you do for Preact if you want to use that. So everything goes towards H just by default. With me so far? I hope, because this is where it's actually going to start getting interesting, where we actually implement DOM to create those DOM elements. All right, let's get started by just creating a simple node project. And now we'll add Babel. And then the JSX transpiling extension, because we got to have that, because it's not there by default. All right, now that's all we need for our basic imports. I mean, this is pretty simple stuff. All right, next I'll touch a Babel RC and index HTML and make a source directory with an index in it, because that's basically our code. Now I'm going to bring up VS Code and hack that package JSON, add a few build commands. All right, next thing to do is go over and configure Babel RC. And then finally, I need to run that build watch command out of the terminal. So we'll go do that. Now we need an index.html. And it needs a div tag and a source to bring in that JS from the lib directory. And last but not least, I can actually bring up a server right here from inside VS Code, so that's cool. Okay, so we have an empty page. Rockin'. So let's go copy that code out of the Babel REPL, since I'm a pretty decent starting point. And let's add some code to append that JSX to a div on the page. I mean, obviously, that's not going to work, right? We've got to go actually create those DOM elements. So now I've got to go and create that DOM function. So the function signature of these is the first the name of the element, like div or image or whatever and then a hash full of the properties, and then finally any children, but there is not an array, it's just everything from like the third argument on is the children, so we need to spread that. First thing to do is create an element using that name, and then return that. Now we gotta handle the props. To start, I'm just gonna iterate through all the keys in props, and then just set the corresponding prop on the element. That's gonna work for everything but style, so let's deal with style. To handle style, we're going to need to actually iterate again over the keys within style. So let's handle that. You know what? Let's give this a try. Let's just add like an image or something. Even if the source is broken, we'll at least know that we're handling image and props properly. All right, let's bring up the inspector. And yeah, all right, cool. So we're adding that first level of tag. So now we need to get to work on adding the children. Now in this context, children can come in three different variations, or at least that's the ones I've seen so far. And those are an array, so it's an array of children, or an object, one single child, or like a string or number, so a primitive. Now you can get into weird combinations of things where an array can also be a combination of those uh, items. So what I've decided to do is actually create like a subfunction called like add child that'll handle all that. All right, let's start off with an array. If we see one, we'll just iterate through it and then call itself add child on each element in there. So that's how we'll handle kind of the variations within the variations. Next is an object. It's the easiest of all of them since we just have to append it, so that's easy. 
And then finally, there's primitive, which isn't all that much more difficult. All you got to do is just create a text node and then add that. All right, let's go add some children to our test case. Cool. This is really slick. And it's not a lot of code either. Anyway, I'm kind of still experimenting with this, and if I like it and I'm and I use it, I'll I'll publish it. Or you guys can nag me in the comments and and I'll publish it. That that's cool. I'm I'm good. Anyway, thanks for watching. I know this is a little bit different from what I normally do. Uh, it's a bit more experimental. Honestly, it's just kind of fun to see where you can go with this sort of stuff. But I actually do think in this case it's pretty useful. I mean, this is a heck of a lot easier than going and creating like large sets of nested DOM create elements and all that. And it just gets hard to deal with all that stuff after a little while. It's a lot of code. All right, see you next time on Blue Collar Coder. Be good to each other.